With how Bakugo looked at the end of this chapter, when Deku finally arrives, we're going to see this scene once again. Deku will help Bakugo up, just like the good old days. Come on, Dynamite. He can't stay defeated forever. What's up? It's Truth Hero, and welcome back to another My Hero Academia chapter review. This is not a pretty chapter. Boku no Hero Academia 360 is one of the saddest chapters we've had in a while. We'll discuss everything from Bakugo getting really down on himself and almost defeating himself mentally, to the heroes waiting around for Deku to show up, and Shigaraki's feet. Alright. Well, the strength with those feet. Told you it wasn't a pretty chapter. So let's dive in. Our chapter opens with Shigaraki stomping on Bakugo's head, taunting him saying, I'll turn you into a corpse by the time Deku arrives. How would your friend feel then? Can you imagine what would happen here if Shigaraki actually killed Bakugo? Deku arrives too late, mind you, only to find that his best friend is no longer with him. I mean, thank goodness villains love to monologue, but Shigaraki and All for One combined, they're pure evil, and he gets full marks as a villain from me. And I know that All From One and Shigaraki are combined, but you get the sense that this sentiment is purely from Shigaraki. It's so maniacal and personal, whereas All For One, yeah, he's an evil character and he's always struck me as someone that's very diabolical and plotting in their plans, but he always seemed business to me, you know? it was It's never personal, it's just business with All For One, you know? Business casual, All For One's just business evil. Now. On the other hand, Shigaraki's completely right. Deku needs to move it and get to this battle. I'll make a prediction that by the next chapter, Deku will have arrived. I'll touch more on this in a bit when we talk about the other heroes, but as we see from this chapter, they're in dire straits without Deku. So to me, it's either he arrives in 361 or the series ends. That's it. Bakugo, still being the determined hero that he is, tries to activate his panzers and get a hit on Shigaraki, and that goes about as well as you thought it would. Shigaraki lifts Bakugo up by his foot, flinging him into the air and catching Bakugo's throat, holding him by the neck so he can taunt him some more. How? I mean, I've been asking this question for the last two, three chapter reviews. How strong is Shigaraki? Now his feet are powerful? He can just lift Bakugo up and fling him into the air with his toes? Gross. And then do this all while avoiding the blast? I mean, is no part of Shigaraki's body the least bit vulnerable? Shigaraki then tells Bakugo, listen, compared to All For One and me, you'll always be a piece of crap. You're just no match for our power. And I really like this. Well, not Shigaraki's words and what he's doing to Bakugo, but I love that Shigaraki's just ch ch slowly chipping away at Bakugo's confidence throughout this chapter. First, he taunts Bakugo saying, what if your best friend Deku arrived and you were dead, or I just threw you off like a fly and you're completely injured by the time he arrives? You know, first he uses emotions against Bakugo. Then, he just shoes away his new powerful upgrade and attack and says, listen, you're just, you'll be weak forever next to me. And if there's one thing that Bakugo and his ego, which is still there, can't stand, it's being second place to anyone, including villains and monsters like Shigaraki. So, brilliant job by Shigaraki to break down Bakugo's confidence on a level that we really haven't seen before. To be perfectly fair to Bakugo here, if someone like Shigaraki flung me up in the air with their toes, gross, I think that would shatter my confidence too. I think I would just be done at that point, like, yeah, I'm, I'm out. Uh, this isn't for me. <laughs> Ugh. You guys know that Sonic meme where they talk about how sweaty and stinky his feet are? Like, where have Shigaraki's feet been? <laughs> but fear not, just as Shigaraki starts to use his hellish hands against Bakugo and consume him, the big three arrive to save the day. Nedure launches a wave attack at Shigaraki, but unfortunately she has to divert her waves since Shigaraki holds Bakugo hostage as a shield. Coward. But you know what else is cowardly? Stabbing someone in the back. Unless that person is a villain like Shigaraki. 
Just then, Shigaraki feels his back being stabbed, and we see Tamaki using two scorpion tails to attack and poison the Villain King. I love Tamaki's new scorpion form. I'm so glad that he thought outside the box, like, hey, maybe we don't need a full frontal assault on Shigaraki. Maybe we can do the old toxic protect stall in Pokemon on him and slowly wear him away with poison. However, I gotta ask, how exactly did Tamaki Amajiki eat scorpions before this battle? To my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not exactly a local delicacy in Japan. So, that must have been a weird request at the pet shop, like, yeah, I'll take one scorpion to go, please. Also, I'm not even going to ask what animal he had to eat to camouflage himself. I, like many of you I'm sure, always had the idea that you might be able to kill or at least weaken Shigaraki with toxins. See, his body's very durable against blunt force trauma, or it can recover well from attacks like Endeavor's fire and always heal itself, and of course it's very strong like we see in this chapter. But if you're able to penetrate that outer shell and get to the nervous system, then any body is a body and will react to poison. I mean, if you shut the brain off, then the body doesn't really matter. But apparently, I was wrong. When Shigaraki notices the poison, he just uses his arm and a bunch of hands and then creates mouths on them to bite the scorpion's tails off and remove the toxins. And he states that, his body will always be able to adapt to any situation or attack anyone throws at him. He kind of reminds me of Darwin from X-Men. Darwin has reactive evolution, so anything that happens in his environment, like being poisoned, set on fire, being thrown underwater, his body simply adapts to survive in those conditions. Perhaps this was the true gift All for One and Dr. Ujiko gave to Shigaraki. I ask once again, is there truly no way to defeat Shigaraki? In fact, let me know down in the comments below. How would you defeat Shigaraki? All heroes, methods, props, quirks, they're all viable. Except for Deku's, because as you notice, he's still not here. Before Bakugo is absolutely consumed by Shigaraki's hellish hands, Mirio manages to pull him to safety and then throws him to Best Genus for safekeeping. He then tries to have a conversation with Shigaraki? Mirio asks Tomura, why do you want to destroy it all? And Shigaraki responds, because the structure of society is flawed. And Mirio says, well, you think that because you've just never had any true friends. And if you did, you'd understand that some things can never be destroyed. Aw, oh, the power of friendship in anime. Now, it's funny that Mirio is trying to reason with Crazy in the middle of a battle, no less, but everything they say here is true. Generally, people that criticize society the harshest are the ones that don't have any true friends, or don't have much going for them, or don't have their lives in order, and instead of reflecting on their own internal faults and failures and trying to improve those, they project this outwardly and cast it on society, blame the world and not themselves. Wow, getting real Jordan Peterson up in here. Clean up your room. That's a good start. In a big three tag team moment, Mirio absorbs one of Nejire's waves into his arm and hits Shigaraki with this wave punch. But alas, he admits they really can't do any damage to Shigaraki until Midoriya arrives. Mirio is right. Friendships are unbreakable. Many last for a lifetime. Some even last for multiple lifetimes. And what Bakugo and Deku have is friendship. Whether or not Bakugo wants to admit that Deku is his friend or not, we all know he is. So, uh, Midoriya, hurry up and save your friend. Unfortunately, Bakugo can't quite see this, and at the moment, his faith in friendship is a bit broken. Best Genius tries to cheer up his mentee by saying, listen, any of us would have had a hard time facing that absolute monster that is Shigaraki. We would have fared no better. So cheer up, it's okay. But Bakugo just keeps staring off into the distance, watching the battle, analyzing their moves. It's like his mind is in the fight, but I don't know if his heart is anymore. At the end of the chapter, it says that Dynamite's spirit is still intact, and I truly hope that's the case, because to me it doesn't really look this way. 
I'm hoping that once Deku shows up, Bakugo will get that boost of confidence he needs to re-enter the fight. You know, maybe their rivalry will work wonders in this way. Bakugo can make fun of Deku for being late and tell him to catch up to me and match my speed or chastise him for a mistake on the battlefield. And this is how these two work together. It's quite clear that Bakugo and the rest of the heroes really need Midori to show up. But my question is, will Deku even be enough here? I know they need Deku and I know they're trying their best, but you gotta have a backup plan in case one hero or one person can't fight. It's not exactly Deku that they need, they do. It's actually Bakugo that they need, with Deku's encouragement. Here's how this arc, and possibly the series, will go down. I predict that when Deku arrives, we will get a reiteration of the scene of Deku helping Bakugo up in the river, like we've seen before, and then Bakugo and Deku will combine an attack like in the movie. After that, Deku probably has to go 1 million percent plus ultra. And that is how the heroes will get one scratch on Shigaraki. All that for a drop of blood. Seriously guys, I'm out of ideas on how to defeat Shigaraki. But mark my words, we will get that scene where Deku helps Bakugo up and they rejoin the fight. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. What will happen when Deku arrives? How will Bakugo react to this? And how will the two most powerful heroes in the world defeat Shigaraki? Love to hear your theories. If you like My Hero Academia content and these chapter reviews, consider subscribing and joining UA today. And until next time, plus ultra.